Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts this Christmas Eve be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I will always remember my first visit to Bethlehem. It was in 2008, that summer, a difficult and violent time in the Holy Land. Israel, responding to a terrorist bombing campaign that had gone on for years, had literally started walling in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Bethlehem, which is just a few miles south of Jerusalem, was on the other side of this new wall. If you haven't seen it, or at least pictures of it, the separation wall, well, it kind of looks like a modern take on the Great Wall of China. It's made of solid concrete slabs, at least 20 feet high, and there are watchtowers along it. It runs for miles and miles, separating Israelis and Palestinians from each other. Nothing about it says, please come and visit. And once we got through the steel-gated checkpoint and into Bethlehem itself, well, we were greeted by dusty, empty streets and tattered posters of Palestinian fighters with their assault rifles pasted up on the buildings. And nothing about that said, pilgrims, welcome here. The only business I actually remember seeing open on Main Street in Bethlehem was a coffee shop named, and I'm not making this up, Stars and Bucks. The coffee was okay, I did have a cup. I mean, how can you not when it's named Stars and Bucks and you're in Bethlehem? And then, and then we got to the place we were going. We got to Church of the Nativity. It's built over a little cave that has been identified as the place where Jesus was laid in the manger, at least since sometime in the third century. The only entrance to this ancient church is through a tiny half-height door called the humble door, because you have to stoop, you have to humble yourself to come into the place where Jesus was born. That seemed fitting. But inside the church itself was, was kind of odd. On one hand, it's one of the oldest standing churches in the world. It was first founded by Helen, the mother of the Roman Emperor Constantine. It's amazing to be in a place where Christians have worshipped for 17 centuries now. On the other hand, for reasons I do not understand, tacky 20th century Christmas ornaments hung from the chandeliers in this ancient church. And the people there seemed to like them. The ornaments were still in place when I visited again in 2017 with a group of us from Epiphany. To be honest, besides that door, there isn't much about the Church of the Nativity that says this is where Jesus was born, at least to an American like me. But at the same time, at the same time, there is a lot about my first visit to Bethlehem that was exactly right. Because because nothing was right in Bethlehem for the first Christmas either. I mean, maybe we think of Bethlehem as as a Christmas card town, a, a peaceful, quiet, under soft starlight sort of place. But that isn't what it was at all. Instead, Bethlehem was dirty and dusty and packed to the brim with with people from all over the world who had been forced to visit. Not because they wanted to, but because the government of the day demanded it. Luke 2, verses 1 and 3 say, In those days a decree went out, an order went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And they did it. They all went to be registered, each to his hometown. To be clear, this registration's purpose, well, it was entirely for the benefit of Caesar Augustus and the occupying Roman government. It was for taxation, not representation. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine having to walk 
halfway across modern-day Israel from, from Nazareth in the north to Bethlehem, pregnant, so that the government could tax you? Well, that's what's going on when Jesus is born of Mary in Bethlehem. And it was a politically tense time, too, and, and not just because of the taxes. Herod was the Romans' designated king of Judea, but the people didn't like him, and he knew it. Josephus, a historian of that period, says that during this time, Herod felt so at risk that he did not, quote, permit the citizens either to meet together or walk or eat together, but watched everything they did. Honestly, it sounds like a lockdown without COVID. In Bethlehem, in Bethlehem on the first Christmas, this sense of being under the watchful eye of dangerous King Herod would have been especially intense. One of his great fortresses, greater than any watchtower on today's separation wall, well, it stands alone on a man-made mountain just a few miles farther south of Bethlehem. Those of you who traveled with us in 2017 remember going there. It's called the Herodian. You can easily see the streets of Bethlehem from King Herod's palace on the pinnacle of that fortress. If Herod was at home, he might have literally looked down on Jesus' birth. And finally, and finally, there's a precise place Jesus was born. We only get a sentence about it in Luke chapter 2. Mary, Luke says, gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. Where was that manger? Maybe in that cave under the Church of the Nativity? Well, I don't know, and nobody really does. It might be. The only thing we can say for sure is exactly the place that Jesus was born has certainly attracted a lot of interest over the years, and naturally so. We can say that, and we can also say Jesus' birthplace probably wasn't a detached stable like we see on Christmas cards, or even like we have that really pretty one over here at church. Luke says nothing about a stable, just a manger. And stables as we picture them, well, they were common in Europe in the Middle Ages, not in Judea at the time of Jesus. Jesus may have been born in the lower level of a private house, that is where animals were kept, and there would have been a manger there. And it's true. Sometimes houses were built over caves, and those were used for animals. But wherever exactly Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there's no doubt, there is no doubt that that it felt just as weird to Mary and Joseph as a place to welcome their firstborn son as, as the Church of the Nativity feels today to, the, to us with those Christmas ornaments dangling from the chandeliers. We can rest assured that, that whatever Mary thought it would be like to bring forth the Son of the Most High that Gabriel told her she would bear, using an animal manger as his crib in crowded and tense and far away from Nazareth, Bethlehem, we can be sure that did not figure into it. Weird. So where does all this tension and all this, this weirdness around the first Christmas in Bethlehem connect to us tonight? Well, you can probably tell where I'm going with this. I think I can say with some authority now that that this past year, 2020, has been a weird year. Probably the strangest year that most of us have experienced in our lifetime. And please God, we'll experience in our lifetime. Nothing seems normal or right. And people are tense. And even beyond COVID, we are at a difficult moment in our national politics. And that's affected our relationships, both with our friends and inside our families. Maybe we spent the first part of the year being scared of the government and now feel a bit relieved. Or maybe we're moving in the opposite direction from comfort to fear. But either way, we would all agree that this place we're in does not feel great, does it? 
And we don't know when things might get better. And it might seem, it might seem this year especially that with its traditions and its comforts, Christmas is an invitation to escape, to escape from a really difficult reality. If we can just put our heads down and pull it off. I feel this. Maybe you do too. And in a very real way, there's no harm done if tomorrow we all just try to pretend 2020 isn't happening and retreat into the home comforts of this season. But here, here is what I suggest that we ponder and even wonder at tonight. Christmas. Christmas starting with the very first Christmas in Bethlehem is not actually some sort of escapism from a weird and weary world, our world, into some cozy land of make-believe. That was never the story. And even today, we, we owe that vibe around Christmas, well, more to Dickens novels and Hallmark and Hollywood than we do to the first Christmas in Bethlehem. You see, Christmas in reality has always been something different than that. Christmas has always been God coming into the weirdness. It's him being with us in the midst of it all through his son, Jesus Christ. And this, this means something very good for us, this very weird, strange, tense, and difficult year of 2020. It means that God really is Emmanuel, God with us. It means our strange and difficult days are not some sort of deterrent to his presence. Friends, COVID can keep us from all gathering how we might choose. It can even make us so we can't sing these beautiful songs in the way we'd like to but it cannot keep God away. If God could go to tired Bethlehem, if he could take on human flesh and be born of Mary and laid in an animal feed trough in that overcrowded, tense, and overwatched town, he can be near us now. He can even be near us this strange Christmas when it's next to impossible for us to do the things we would normally do with the people we would normally do them. Friends, we may not be with our family and friends this Christmas in the way we would like. And most of us are not even able to be at church this evening. Those things are hard this year. But do not count God out this Christmas just because it's hard and just because it's different. Instead, count him in, look for him. Look for him especially this year. This is exactly the kind of Christmas he shows up in. Maybe we could take those times over the next few days when we feel lonely, or we might be tempted to spend a half hour or more down the rabbit hole staring at our smartphones and reading the disturbing news. And instead, pray our worries to God or read through a book of the Bible. That's something I always enjoy doing this time of year. Or just ask ourselves, where have we seen God's presence in our life or the lives of others lately? We might be surprised what we find if we stop and think about it. And we might be surprised how seeing God even in this weird world helps us through these days. God means to be with us even this year because that's the kind of God he is, the kind of God he always has been, a God who comes to be with us wherever we find ourselves. Whether that's weird Bethlehem or tense Northern Virginia. Isn't that good news of great joy that will be for all people? 
I think so. I hope you do too. Merry Christmas.